Hello, and welcome back to another episode here of the Be In Demand podcast. Today, I have Victoria Volk on, who is coming on as a special guest, and she was also a student in a previous round of In Demand Signature Speech. And I'm bringing her on to talk about not only her experience, and her what she learned from the program so that you might be able to be able to answer any of questions that you might have on the program, but also to hear how her topic of grief and how she is sharing that on a bigger scale instead of just these one-off conversations. So let's get on to the show. You're listening to Be In Demand, the podcast for honest advice, inspiring stories, and ideas for growing your business by leveraging the expert that you are. I'm your host, Loria Mirabito, business mentor, and I'm also a reformed painfully shy girl, red wine lover, and exercise enthusiast. Join me as I share how being positioned as the expert in your industry, even if it's a busy one, will help you stand out and be the one in demand to hire and work with. Welcome everybody back to the show. Today, I have a very special guest, Victoria Volk, who is one of my former students from In Demand Signature Speech. And we're going to talk about her journey through In Demand's signature speech and about her story. And it was so important for me to have her on this, on my podcast, because her message, her story is so profound. Victoria, can you just like give us like, just introduce yourself to my audience, please. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am the owner of The Unleashed Heart and um, I'm a self-published author. I've um, have a lot of certifications under my belt, a lot of different things that I do, but they all kind of work together in helping and supporting those who are grieving or going through a difficult time in their life, um, go from surviving to thriving through energy healing work, through grief, um, counseling and, um, career and life satisfaction, self-discovery type work. Yeah. And I think this topic of grief is one that is not talked about very often. It's almost like sex politics and money. We just like, we just like, we don't want to talk about that stuff. And as personal as I know grief myself from losing my first husband, I also know And this was something that we really talked about during um, in the crafting of your signature speech is that grief is so much more than death. Can you just like elaborate on that a little bit more for people? Yeah, I'll share a definition that people likely have never heard. (laughs) So grief is the loss of hopes, dreams, and expectations. It is anything that you wish could have been or would be different better or more. And that could be about your life, about a relationship or anything. And there are more than four. Yeah. Career. There are more career, a job, a a vacation, a trip. COVID. I was just going to say what just happened the past few years. Yeah. Can you, I mean, it's three, over three years we're into that, right? Like that's, and it's still affecting people in really big ways. And so and it's here to stay. And, you know, there's more than 40 plus losses. So it stacks up. 40 stacks up. plus losses. Yes. So- and there are those intangible losses too. Those things that you can't really put into words. It's, you can have loss of trust and loss of safety and security. There's grief in that too. Wow. I never even thought of that. Um, but 40 plus different versions of grief, of which loss. just of Already, loss. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Of loss. Yeah. And for me, what that says is, is that most people who think grief is just death, you know, like there's 39 others that most of us, I bet, like if we, if we had like a checklist, be like, yep, 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 yep. Mm, no, maybe not but there'd be more checks of yes than there are no. That's a good reminder to me because I actually have a checklist. (laughs) Maybe I should have that as an opt-in so people can really see how many losses they've really had in their lives. Because when we come out of the womb, it's almost like we might as well have come out with a backpack and every loss that we experience throughout our lives, we might as well just throw a rock into that backpack because we're carrying it with us. 
it follows us into adulthood. And this is why we find in our, in our lives as adults, these, we find ourselves in these cyclical patterns of behavior. We might find this, ourselves in the same type of relationship with the same type of, you know, other significant other. And it's like, why does that keep happening? Why do I keep finding myself in this situation? What am I not learning here? What is repeating from my childhood? What wound am I expressing in my adult life from my childhood? Yes. And so, especially if you've had trauma as a child, and it doesn't have to be a big T trauma. I mean, moving several times can be traumatic for a child. You know, a lot of military families have to move a lot and you have a really difficult time um, really connecting deeply with other people because, well, why should I connect deeply with you? I'm just going to be leaving anyway. You know, it can be really difficult to create long lasting, deep connections with people when you're constantly moving. So and that's just one example. That's just one example. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So you joined in demand signature speech. Could you just share like what compelled you to join the first what, 10 minutes, nine minutes that we're recording here is exactly why I joined Signature, Signature Speech because we don't talk about grief in this way. Mm-hmm. And it was such a huge part of my life for most of my life growing up as a child griever. This information changed my life. It helped me to reframe my life because I thought I was meant for a life of suffering, because that's all I really knew in my mind, you know, and when we don't have people explaining to us, or, or teaching us the language, and the words and how to express ourselves, or we don't have that, we don't know how, or we don't know how to healthily, in a, in a healthy way, address our emotional uh, issues, then we resort to behaviors that are unhelpful and probably hurtful to ourselves and maybe even to others. We might abuse alcohol or drugs or um, become a workaholic. Um, There's, we call them STIRBs in grief recovery, which is the method that changed my life. And um, I am its biggest cheerleader, I would like to say, because I started a podcast to try and expand my message, which is going on three years, but I want to expand it even more. And so I wanted to learn how to write a good speech and um, one that would be impactful, that people could walk away and be like, wow, I never knew that. I never heard about grief that way. Mm, I love that. So you are definitely on a mission to share your message, to share your story, not just with one-offs, but really like on a bigger, grander scale. My slogan for my podcast, Grieving Voices, is let's talk about grief like we talk about the weather. And so that's, that is my mission. I love that. Victoria, can you just share with the audience what your repeatable phrase is that you, that you crafted inside In Demand Signature Speech? It's time we do grief differently. It's time we do grief differently. And so for everybody who's just listening, um, a repeatable phrase is something that you repeat throughout your presentation. So Victoria is constantly sharing information or statistics or a story that proves her repeatable phrase. So she would share like a stat or maybe even a case study and then she would repeat that, you know, it's time to do grief differently. So that the audience really, a repeatable phrase is almost like, like the center of your content, like everything that you talk about really can stem from this one phrase. Yeah. And I even named my program after that. <laughs> you really, oh, congratulations. I love Well, that. actually my repeatable phrase came from that program because it's called do grief differently and it's 12 weeks and it's, yeah, it's, exactly how people can learn to do grief differently. It's been very impactful for people. And because of that, because you're, because of that repeatable phrase, like mine is speaking is the fastest way to grow your business. Like everything that I talk about is speaking is the fastest way to grow your business. So with you to be able to have that repeatable phrase, like even as a program, like you get known for that phrase, even if somebody that's in your audience, even let's just hypothetically say, I can't remember the name of that speaker, but 
it's like they remember your phrase. And that becomes one of those really, those, those moments where people like really remember you and then rave about you and refer you because they, because of that repeatable phrase. And that's just, I mean, like that, that's just one part of, of uh, the in-demand signature speech. So what did you love most about crafting your presentation during this nine week program? I'm the type of person that needs a structure or else I'm all over the place. Um, even for like a project where I have all these ideas and, you know, mind mapping is beneficial for me. I have to see it and visualize it and, you know, put all the parts together. But this, I, it's almost like writing a book, right? You, you have different parts and it has to go in a certain way and, um, ideas and things can be moved around and it's not written in stone, right? It's, it's like a, a living document. And I just didn't have the structure. Um, I suppose part of me too, is I wanted it to be really good. And I don't want to be someone's, I don't want to like wing it myself. And I get in front of a stage and it falls completely flat, right? Like I'm not someone that wants to I stay half ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like to half ass stuff. And so having someone who's been there, who knows what they're doing to guide and teach me, um, that's what I was looking for. I, I had a coach too, when I wrote self-published my book and wrote my book. So um, if there's something I, I don't feel confident about, um, I'm not afraid to hire the person that can help me accomplish what I'm setting out, setting out to do. So what I'm hearing you say, which I hear a lot of people say, it's like, I've got all of these ideas that are floating around. And a lot of times what I find like novices, what they do is they try to put all of those ideas in their presentation. And because there's so much information in there, they end up overwhelming the audience. And I do teach a structure that is, that is simple, that you don't share, you don't tell everything. We just tell what the audience needs. Like, because we also set a goal. You set a goal for your presentation. And in order for that goal to happen, what has to be in the presentation? Not everything. <laughs> and that is a tendency of mine to inform, inform, inform. And yeah, so I... I know brevity is not my best suit. <laughs> and so, especially for a speech, you want to be concise with your messaging. And so I, I knew I needed help with that. So, and yeah, you, you did a really nice job. And, you know, like I use that, the metaphor of like a table, these tables, you have three tables. There are three different topics or tips or pieces of information that you're going to share with the audience and then the legs are the supporting information. So I remember like, yeah, you wanted more tables. <laughs> I'm just like, no, you can't have more tables. You know? Yeah, I can go in so many different directions because of the background and training and certifications and things that I had. And so I find myself, ooh, I could, I could mention this or talk about this. And um, yeah, so you help me rein it in and dial it back. <laughs> Yeah, because all of that other stuff is great for your program, right. is great for your one-on-one -on -one work that you do with clients. But in a speech, you know, it's really to help the audience take the next step, you know, take that next step with you, whether that's your, your opt-in, whether that's to book a call with you. But again, like if we overwhelm the audience, you know, and that's something that, again, that I see with a lot of new speakers, you overwhelm the audience, they don't do anything. But yeah, you, you, you did a really nice job, I have to say, with, with your presentation. <laughs> yeah, and have you found that you've been able to use different parts of it in different um, situations? Um, not yet. Well, that's actually not true, because there were aspects of it that I've pulled into guesting as a podcast guest. Um, but the structure itself that I learned is helping me craft another speech for a 
a group of women. Um, I'm taking part in a workshop and I'm presenting at a workshop. And so it's very helpful to have that structure to help me just re- rinse and repeat. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to make a new presentation because you can essentially still use your beginning, your authority section, and even your clothes. And yeah, I mean, this is a workshop, so it's a little bit longer than a, than a, like a signature speech, mm-hmm. but that's where you are. What I taught you is like, you just like inject exercises, right? You know, audience exercises, just because, you know, you're, you're actually speaking for 90 minutes at this particular talk that we're, uh, that's rapidly approaching that I'm so excited for you. <laughs> yeah. And actually it's more of a round table type discussion. So I'm not going to be at the front of the room. They asked me if I wanted to be at the front of the room, but I had never thought about um, that angle. And I think in a small group setting, um, it's, it's almost like when you go to church and the minister comes down from behind the podium, (laughs) you know, it feels more intimate. Yeah. And so I will be actually sitting at a round table at a table with these women and it'll feel more like a conversation. Yeah. And yet still I have the structure to keep myself <laughs> on point and on, on task of, of the content. So it's right. yeah, still going to be very beneficial. And that's really beautiful that you saw that as instead of me standing up in front of a tiny audience, like, let me just sit at the table with them to have that, this very intimate conversation, you know, which is still your signature speech, you know, and do some great exercises like at the table. That's wonderful. So if somebody was asking you um, your opinion of joining in demand signature speech, because I will be, you know, launching it and we'll be running it again in a few weeks, March 20th, actually, uh, what would you say to them? Do it. (laughs) If you feel nudged, I'm all about following your intuition and following the nudges. So if you feel a calling, um, I would answer that call because it's, you're being nudged for a reason. Uh, Too many times we deny ourselves of our own, we kind of silence our own voice um, because, oh, well, maybe the investment is more than what we thought, or what's my husband going to say if I invest this or my significant other, or, um, or do it, will I have the time? Um, but I think if it's something that's important to you, you'll make the time. And if it's something that you feel a calling to do, that it can really benefit you and your business and help you grow as an entrepreneur, um, then it's an investment in yourself too. Thank you. Did you have fun in the program? I did. I loved that it was actually kind of like a a mastermind in a way as well. I really liked that aspect where you can, it's not just work, 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 and write, write, write. It's, you know, kind of masterminding through the challenges of that process too, because um, it, you know, sometimes things can come up, especially if you are um, so close to your content, right? Like, um, and you can have a lot of these self-worth or, um, you know, especially if you're stepping out for the first time and putting yourself out there for the first time, it can feel very scary and you feel like, oh, is this really my, am I worth this? Like, are people going to like me? <laughs> you know, so you have all these insecurities. Yes. That come up. And so I think just having a group to, that you can talk those things through um, is, is really been a beneficial part of the program too. And was there anything intangible that you would say, this is also what I got from the program besides having a signature speech and a structure? Self-confidence. I hear that a lot. Can you just elaborate on that? I know my content. I know my message, but I can get diarrhea of the mouth. And so to have like these tabletops, right? These key things that are the most, that I feel are the most important that people need to know and learn about Um, it's kind of a guidepost for 
meeting people on the street or like last night I met with a group of ladies I'd never met them before and it was an opportunity to share a little bit about what I do but in a maybe a little bit different way so it just um I don't know gives you more um I don't know <laughs> juice to your message I don't know how to say that well- Well, and, and I get that, you know, because I hear that a lot, like people who have gone through the program feel more confident. Yeah. I think as if you're present, yeah, it's like you, you, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm just not. And for everybody who's listening, it's that more (laughs) confidence in what you're saying, how you're saying it, why you're saying it. Um, It's the how, it's the how you're saying it, because if you're hesitating or you're not you know what I mean? So it really going through this process helps to clarify things for you too. Yes. Yes. I've, I've heard that a lot too. Thank you. So for everybody who is listening to this and that now their eyes are a little perked up about a little bit more about grief, would you share with my audience, like where they can find you, follow you and learn from you? Um, my website, the unleashed heart.com all the links for all the things are on there. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. Um, I have a podcast grieving voices. There's a link for that on there as well. Um, and I have some free resources. There's some eBooks and an energy quiz to see what energy type you are. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff on there and you can, schedule a free consultation or just reach out to me. If you have a question, I'm taking Q and A's for my podcast. So I would love Q and A's from anyone that has me. So, yeah. And I'll make sure that all that information is down in the show notes. And can you just talk a little bit about your quiz? Because I, I know about your quiz, but my audience doesn't. Yeah. So there are four energy types that I've identified and based on that energy type, I offer different suggestions and information about what may be what's leaking your energy, like where you may have energy leaks and what you can do to nurture your energy and your energy type. And then I offer a suggestion of, you know, at the end there's, I offer some, I offer several different things. And so based on your quiz, I can offer, well, this is what I think would be a good fit for you in my offerings. Um, certainly you don't have to take me up on that, but you'll have a lot of information to, to chew on. There's some, uh, journal prompts based on your energy type as well. There's a lot of content there. So, and it's absolutely free. What's the uh, link to take the quiz? It's right at the top on my website. And I also have, um, you can spin to save on a future energy healing session, and then you'll receive, um, a a coupon code for that. And then you'll also receive my newsletter, the unleashed letters. It's a biweekly publication that I send out. Um, but yes, there's a link on my website. So right at the top of your website. So go take the quiz to find out where you're leaking your energy, what kind of energy you are, and learn all the really good information from Victoria herself. Make sure you check her out and follow her over on Instagram, which is where I follow her. And Victoria, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Thank you for having me. I've absolutely loved your program and it's been so beneficial for me. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And join me over in my private Facebook group for more tips, community, and free trainings. You'll find the link in the show notes. You can also help this podcast reach more listeners by leaving a review. And as a thank you, each month I pick one of my reviewers to win a free coaching call with me. So if you haven't done so already, Please leave a review and you could be the next winner.